to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now, this is going to be both a relaxation and a sleep session. There will be two versions, one with, one without music. And the background music is by Kevin MacLeod. The music version will be longer, be about 51 minutes and 8 seconds, precisely. Now, if you're listening to this for the relaxation, then I would suggest setting your alarm in case you fall asleep. Because my my little boring voice does have a tendency of sending people to sleep. And just last night, a friend phoned up and she fell asleep talking to me on the phone. I hope she got home safely. So I would like to start by asking you to get yourself comfortable. Either sitting down in a comfortable chair, lying down on a bed. If you're in a chair, make sure that the chair has armrests so that you don't fall out of the chair basically you need to put safety first if you're anything like me if you're lying down there's a chance you're going to fall asleep I could listen to heavy metal music lying down and still fall asleep you know it's just my body probably the same as you really our bodies are primed to be ready to fall asleep when we lay down on a bed it's something that we've been doing since we were babies And there may be some background sounds. I've got Horace the Pigeon in the trees outside. Because I'm recording this during the daytime. Can't really avoid Horace. He's there first thing in the morning and last thing at night. He loves uh, he's just basically shouting hello. Hi JJ. Hi everyone listening to this recording. So he's part of the family. Let's not push him out just because he's got an annoying voice. And if that was the case then. There'd be no point listening to this. Because I'll probably got an annoying voice as well. Maybe. So falling asleep or being relaxed. Doesn't need complete silence. And I think that's something that we need to learn. At least I did. It took me years to realise that. You know, I used to think everything had to be sterile and completely silent in order for me to fall asleep. It's not true. It's never silent. Even if you wear earplugs... Or, you know, in your ear, well, where else would you put them? You're still going to hear, you might hear your your heartbeat, or you might hear your breathing, or you can hear vibrations, or feel vibrations. There's still going to be an outside, or there's going to be other feelings. There's going to be something that you could use as a distraction if you chose to 
happening just because you're sitting in your chair or lying down doesn't mean that your body has disappeared necessarily it may feel like that you know at certain, certain times but you can still feel things you can still notice the temperature of the room you can still hear not just Horace the pigeon but and you can hear my voice So the fact that you are listening to my voice and have already started to relax and maybe you've already started to feel a bit tired, maybe through boredom, maybe just because you associate my voice with relaxing deeply and Maybe falling asleep and drifting off. But it's still a sound, it's still not silent. Which means if there's a plane going over, or if there's you know, cars in the distance, or maybe you've got a, a neighbour with a television that you can hear. There's no difference to listening to me. It's still a sound. And it's a little bit different from listening to me, but it's still a sound. It's still an external thing. That actually is just there. And of course, if you used to lie down and get all angry, then, yeah, that's going to get in the way of relaxing deeply and just drifting off naturally to sleep. And I used to do that. I used to be the angriest, want to get to sleep person ever when I was younger. Trust me, I'm serious. I used to get so angry. Every time the door slammed, every time I could hear a neighbour or a television, I used to, sometimes I'd yell, I'd punch things. I used to get really when I was younger. I'm not talking about last week. I used to get, I, I almost needed it to be sterile, a sterile environment. And then... After learning hypnosis and meditation as well, I realized that it doesn't matter about background sounds. You know, I learned to meditate in a Buddhist center, which was in the middle of a busy town. So I'd be there on a Thursday evening and there'd be people outside, drunk, swearing, shouting, laughing, singing, whatever. And it didn't affect the meditation. It didn't affect me, who I was, because who I was didn't change because of other outside sounds. And there's also another aspect to this that I didn't realize, but I kind of I discovered that your ears turn off at a certain point, your ears just seem to turn themselves off and they stop listening when you fall asleep. And when you drift, your ears just turn off. And it's a strange phenomenon because I don't know why, but I'm guessing it's because they're not needed. Just in the same way, you're not going to have loads of blood flowing to your stomach or to your limbs because you're not running, you're not physically active in the moment that you're 
relaxing deeply or lying down. That's not needed. Just in a way that your eyes are not going to be focused the way they would be if you were looking at a television or uh, some kind of screen, you know, laptop, phone, whatever, or looking at a person. Your eyes are not going to do that because your eyes are closed and because there's nothing to look at. They're not needed. So there's a lot of your body that's not really needed at this time. There's those automatic processes that continue naturally anyway. Without any effort from you. Everything's on automatic. It's almost autopilot. And we spend a lot of our lives on autopilot anyway. Which is good in some ways. Your heart beating, your blood flowing, your kidneys, liver, your uh, processing of food. All of, you know, the lungs, all that stuff. We're lucky that it's automatic. We don't need to think about it. Because it frees our energy and our time to focus on other things. But when we're in automatic thinking, that's where the problems can arise. So I know there's some people, they lay down to go to sleep and their minds are active. Or they try and relax and, you know, some people say that they can't because their mind is too active. But that's leaving it on autopilot. So you can leave all the other stuff, the bodily functions on autopilot, your body healing, your, you know, the oxygen being spread through your body. All the things that are just naturally happening. That can continue to be on autopilot. You can take off the thinking part, your mind, take that off of autopilot and take control of it. By control, I don't mean being controlling. What I mean is, if you think of it in a way as you turn up to your home and maybe you've got a lodger who has invited all of their friends round for a party and you've come home. Autopilot would just be you walking in there and do nothing about it. But by taking it off of autopilot, you go in there and you tell everyone to get out. Which is what we do with the thoughts. So instead of there being a party in our mind with lots of different thoughts going on that almost seem out of our reach because it's on autopilot, switch off the autopilot and open the doors and let those thoughts out because they're not necessary at this moment. Just in a way is how your body, if you're walking down a street or running for a bus, 
or day-to-day -day living, there's a lot of stress that you'd have in your body that's actually required. There's a lot of stress involved in walking and carrying things, carrying shopping, or just keeping your body straight. You know, the process, there's a lot of stress involved, a lot of muscle activity, a lot of movement. And we're on autopilot for that. You can know where you want to go. You know, I'm going to walk to the bus stop. But I don't have to think about the process of walking. I can notice what it feels like. But I'm on automatic pilot with that stuff. When you're laying down on your bed, ready to sleep deeply, or if you're just relaxing, you can take that autopilot off. Because you don't need any of that stress that's necessary for you to walk, or talk, or think, or act, or be physically able to do stuff because none of that thing none of that is relevant when you're lying down or sitting relaxing it's not, not needed you don't need to use your legs when you're lying in bed you don't need to use your arms you don't need to really use any of your body all the internal organs are on automatic pilot so it's all happening without any effort from you you don't need your mind when you're relaxing deeply and when you're lying in bed drifting off to sleep you don't need your mind it's not necessary. Just like you don't need your ears, you don't need your eyes, you don't need your sense of smell, you don't need your sense of taste, you don't need your sense of feeling, really. None of those senses are required when you relax deeply or sleep. It really is letting go completely just by turning off the autopilot. You get rid of that stuff that you do need a lot of the time when you're awake when you're walking about when you're at work in interactions communication watching television eating all those things you need certain functions to be in operation but when you're just relaxing Or lying down on your bed, drifting to sleep. You don't need any of that. Which means you stop caring about anything. In fact, it's almost impossible to worry about anything. When you just turn off that autopilot and let everything just drift away, realizing that you don't need it in this moment, everything will still be available when you need it. But right now, 
You don't need anything. You don't need anything. And as I count down from ten down to one, you can become twice as relaxed and twice as sleepy as you drift away. Now Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. 